Um, hi, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Pete, and uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, improv cues, which is the installation at the back there. Um, so I thought this is just a chance to explain where this, this installation came from, and also then just give you a quick overview of how to use it, so that way you can maximize its use in the small amount of time we've got to play around with it. Um, so imp imp improv cues came from a project that we developed at uh, Schmieder, um, which is an amazing hack, hack camp digital art. Uh, festival in Austria, near Salzburg, and um, which takes place on this tiny little island here. And it's basically like the large building takes up the whole island, and there's about 150 artists going around making amazing stuff. And just sort of point out, uh, Jordi, who really wanted to come but couldn't quite make it, unfortunately. Um, so uh, at Schmieder, we came up with this idea of Project Idea Bot. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple, and it's a little bit tongue in cheek. And the idea was to go around and interview. Um, a whole bunch of, or, or as many artists as we could, uh, create a day space or a corpus of their, of their work and have a, an, an ideas bot that would generate new Schmieder ideas. And the, the, the good thing about this is there was 20 years of Schmieder projects to draw upon. So we had a whole historical range and people were quite willingly given this this. And we were kind of trying to get the idea of, the, do you mind giving the robot uh, or the machine your ideas? Um, so so that, that, that works and it created some quite, quite fun Things I'd really, I'd really like to see an artwork exploring digital terrorism through the beauty of ice plates poetry. That'd be an interesting one. But it also came up with some really simple things like making art in the river, which was again just popped out of nowhere. Um, but there was an unexpected outcome: is we expected this just to be a, a solo installation where someone would come across it, have a little play around, get something from it, and go away. But it turned out to be a really social, uh, interactive, um, and performative uh, installation. So we ended up with. Um, a lot of people using it, and it ended up being a kind of like ideation performance. So people would be egging other people on to come up with new, new ideas or riff off of ideas, and people would kind of be taking the hot seat. And um, it turned into this much bigger thing than we expected. Um, so through, through doing this, we, there's a sort of few uh, questions that were raised, such as, yeah, sort of can tra training machine learning actually be performance in itself rather than the outcome, which we hadn't expected? Uh, the, the classic one of can machine learning tools be an equal creative partner? So we were doing that by provocatively saying, sort of, you know, do, you can have these ideas for free to, to, to use next year when you come back. Um, and yeah, does machine learning have to be intelligent? And we were interested in this as it's deliberately a little bit stupid. This is not clever machine learning. And we were kind of making people come up with stupid ideas and bringing it down to a sort of artificial stupidity kind of level rather than intelligence, which is quite fun. Um, so. So moving on quickly to the, so how, how we actually got to the installation improv cues at the back is essentially we just reframed it for the context of music and um, drew upon the, uh, the, the idea of using oblique strategies, which is uh, Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt's um, 1975 card deck for creative unblocking. So if you get stuck while you're in the studio or, um, or making music, you could use these to creatively unblock yourself. And... So we thought, could you, could you just have Project Idea Bot and Oblique Strategies and create a musical performance based on uh, machine-generated cues? Um, and in, yeah, so in doing so, we, we wanted to kind of close this loop where the Project Idea Bot was generating ideas which you, could, you, you, could, you clearly couldn't make uh, sort of a art in the river right then and there. Whereas here, you can actually come up with an idea, perform it, suggest a new cue, and close this loop to get kind of creative feedback. Um, OK, so improv cues. So first of all, we base our metaphor around having a deck of cards, a bit like oblique strategies. Um, we've decided upon, after a bit of trial and error, we've decided upon four different types. Uh, we've got the classic oblique strategies, which are sort of obtuse suggestions and uh, sort of, uh, yeah, various different kind of methods for inspiration. Um, we've taken Brian Eno's deck as a whole and put it in there, and that added about another 100 of our own. Oh, and to point out, uh, through the last two days, I've been taking people, notes from people's talks, and so hopefully there's at least a couple from everyone's talk, pretty much, in, in, in the Oblique Strategies deck. Uh, there's the sound deck, so this is to give a, a sound prompt, such as, yeah, the, the sound of fresh snow crunching underfoot. So it's a, it conjures up a picture um, for, for people to, to try and interpret. There's the instrument one. So this one's tailored to the instruments that I've got. So we brought a whole bunch of instruments, and there's actually a piano we realized this morning, so I've added a few piano ones in there. 
Uh, and these are direct actions that you can read the card and just perform straight away. And then I, I feel the most fun one that I find is uh, the game or rule cards. There's the pink one on magenta. Uh, and this is ways to actually play the system itself. And I was basing this on my experience of um, learning uh, John Zorn's Cobra um, and playing with that for sort of a few years in a group. Uh, so basically, you wholesale taken John Zorn's Cobra and put it in here and then put a whole bunch of other game, game piece sort of things. Um, yeah, so for, for this point, I thought I'd basically have a quick uh, unstructured manual, because I don't, want, I don't want to tell you how to use this. The whole point is it's improvised, and you should be using it anyway, but I'll give you a quick heads up so um, you can see how, it, how it's used. So I'll run you through a typical process. So this is, this is what it looks like. It would be projected up on the wall. Um, there's a keyboard, so you can type new cues. And what you tend to do is start here. So there'll be some cards up. You'll get to play these cards, or be inspired, or just play, play music. So the whole point is it's for unblocking. So if you, if you just want to uh, create an improv, improvised piece, just go for it. And this is if you get stuck. Uh, so you might start by interpreting those. But maybe you start to get bored. So you've got a whole deck of cards. You can pr press escape, shuffle them, and draw three new cards. At this point, there's no machine learning. This is just the cards that are already there. So then you might have a play with those. But you could also add a new, uh, a new card. So you can choose a type of card, one of the four types, using the tab key. Uh, the conductor who's standing there with the keyboard can do this. Uh, you can go through the different type of cards, and you can maybe choose to do a new sound. So you can then sort of write in a new type of sound. A uh, marble rolls down a wooden staircase, sort of uh, evoke a particular image. Uh, and when you hit enter, it pops up uh, to be played by the, 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 the performers. Uh, at this point, this is where it gets fun, is two new cards are made by uh, machine learning, um, just uh, Markov chain generation, sort of very simple stuff, uh, which then gives you two, two new uh, cues to perform with. And these weren't in the deck before, so these get generated and put in the deck, so your deck gets bigger. And through this, going back to what I think Surprise was mentioned uh, quite a lot yesterday, uh, the idea is to create a nice surprising interaction between generating cards, suggesting stuff, interpreting through performance, and creating this interesting sort of machine-mediated sort of feedback loop. Um, so I just thought, just for the last two slides, I just thought I'd say about the design decisions that went into this. Um, so one thing that was really important for us is, going right the way back to Project IdeaBot, was you have to trade with the machine. You don't get ideas for free, because it would be really easy just to have a button and say, generate me new stuff. And that gets really boring really quickly, we, we found. So a deliberate decision is you have to give it something for it to give it something back. And it's very generous. It gives you two, two back. So that's good. Um, uh, ambiguity, we wanted uh, yeah, no set way to play. And also the game cards, uh, my favorite ones, are the most important because that changes how you interact with the system. So it's not a, a fixed idea. You, you actually can generate new ways to interact with itself. Uh, so future work that I'd like to go on to is to have different machine learning. So we can imagine you can have different machine learning per deck of cards. So the oblique ones could go down to, say, letter level uh, text generation. It could get really weird really quickly. Uh, an open environment, so at the moment it's very fixed. You've got three cards to play and you've got one to add. It would be great to open that up somehow. And then the one I'd be really interested in is I have a colleague in the computer science department who's built a robot that writes with pencil. And it's designed to do it so it writes in a way, a very human-like way, sort of with, full of errors. And I'd really love to do actual sort of uh, John Zorn Cobra-style cards, you know, sort of on colourful paper, and uh, remove the screen entirely from the process. And that'd be really good. So... Um, so that was a flying overview, um, but the, the, the installation only really works through having you involved with it. So I'd like to, yeah, if you'd like to come and perform, uh, there's a whole bunch of instruments there. Um, if you'd like to type new cues or just be the audience, come, come and gather after you've had your lunch, and that'd be really great. Uh, thanks.